Hey, brother. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. How about yourself? Not too bad, brother. Awesome, awesome. Not too bad. Hey, man, let me uh, move over here. Get this okay. Big freaking light. <laughs> Give you uh, something. There we go. That's a little better. Oh, yeah. Awesome. How's it going, man? It's going good. It's going good. You had a pretty eventful morning. I take it. Uh, yeah, man. I'm in the middle of... Uh, I wrote, directed, and starred in and produced a movie back Ooh. in September. And we are in the process right now of selling it. So it's just... Which is... Uh, we've already got some people that want to buy it. But like we're just in the middle of that whole thing. So things are coming up like in this, you know in a minute that we have to call and jump on the phone and go screen, go do this, go do that. So that's awesome. That's really great to hear. Yeah, man. So it's all good, you know? Yeah. Are you able to release what the film is called? Yeah. The, the movie is called hunted hunted. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's not a lot of information out there about it yet, but you can talk about it. I've already talked about it in interviews and whatnot, but, uh, um, yeah, it, we're going to do the full-blown release, you know, sort of uh, announcement of it all once we have it finalized, how we're, and with who we're going to release. Right. Awesome. That's so cool to hear, man. I'm glad to hear about that because what you've done so far is amazing. All your acting and what right. you've been in is just so awesome. And I, that's really exciting to hear because I feel like it'll be awesome on what you're going to do with it. I'm excited for it. Yeah, man, you know, it was, when I was uh, shooting Batman, mm -hmm. you know, there was like a six-month uh, small army of people traveling the world, just, I mean, it was the best experience of my life. Right. It, I mean, I'd always had this story in my mind, and when I was done with that, it was like, okay, now I've got to do the opposite. I need, I need 15 guys, <laughs> a couple of cameras, and let's just disappear in the woods for a while. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Let, let's go do that and shoot it in 10 days and, and see what we have. Right. That's so cool. So you shot it in 10 days then? Yeah, yeah. Wow. We had 11 days to shoot and we lost a day uh, in a lightning storm. Ah, that sucks. But at and, least you still got everything. Yeah, man. We got it all done. That's so, so cool. Um, yeah. It's really cool because um, I actually met you back in November at Days of Dead Chicago. Oh yeah. When you right before the collection got released, so oh, I got man. my good poster signed by the entire cast behind us. Oh yeah, man. There you go. So yeah, I was I was really pumped for that film because I love the collector so much, and and plus you were just in Dark Knight Rises that same year, and I was like, yeah, this is what's up. I'm so yeah, excited. And uh, yeah, it was a lot. That movie was fun, man. I, I'm more partial to the first one. I think I like the collector. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. It just it's it's more personal, you know. It's it's man against man and right. You it's know. you don't have a team behind you to try to take down the collector. It was just you and this little girl that held you back that you had to go run back for and get. And right. I I love how the first one's a lot more claustrophobic too, though. Um, I felt the second one was a lot more open. There's right. a lot of areas there wasn't. There wasn't like a trap on every footstep you took. You didn't have to be as cautious, in my opinion. Well, you know, it, the first one to me was like, a, it's like a UFC fight. Like, <laughs> yeah. you guys in a cage, yeah. and only one of us was going to come out of there. Right. Yeah. yeah, I could totally see that. So to me, it, it, it's sort of, you know, uh, I grew up playing sports and, and was even, I was a boxer for a few years. Yeah. And so to me, it was like it was so easy to just get into that mindset set of it. It's right. like, look, this guy doesn't really want to be here, but he's here now. And, <laughs> uh, it's on. Yeah. There's yeah. no backing away from it either. No, no, no. <laughs> Even no matter what type of stuff you saw. Or, and then the no. guilt trip of the little girl still being in the house as soon as you get out. Right. You're like, I cannot be this heartless. <laughs> right. That's absolutely right. That's awesome. Um, well, we always like to start off with this one interview question. We got it from Lou Temple and we sat here and talked for like 30 minutes about the type of coffee he was drinking. And he told us all about like these certain Starbucks that have these things. So I was yeah. curious, what type of coffee do you drink? If you drink any, you know what, right now I'm 
I have one of those uh, little coffee pots that, that makes the single servings. Oh, yeah. The Keurig or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I am a, uh, it's the, uh, the donut, the donut house coffee. That sounds fantastic. That's what it is. It's, it's basically a Dunkin' Donuts ripoff. <laughs> yeah. So, I Do drink you... Dunkin' Donuts ripoff coffee. Yeah. That's what I drink. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And um, also, I usually have a partner. Me and her are both on the same page. Um, my friend Maggie, right now, she's just moving to Chicago. Okay. So um, she just wanted to make sure to tell you hi and that she's oh, sorry please. she missed it. Hey, no, tell her I said hello for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely will. Um, yeah. So um, also, Lou Temple liked to talk about how him, Andrew Lincoln, and Norman Reedus would all sit there on set, and right before a scene, they would listen to a certain type of band or song. And I was curious, so what what kind of music did you listen to on the set of The Collector, The Collection, the webisodes for Walking Dead, Dark Knight Rises? It, it's, a lot of times, I mean, certain things will hit me. And yeah. it's not even something that's, like, specific, that's jumping out at me. Sometimes it is. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'll just be in that mindset driving. Yeah. And I'll hear something on the radio. Yeah. And it just happens. I mean, literally, I, the movie that I wrote and uh, directed, AWOL Nation. Oh, yeah. I listened to that, you know, pretty much for, I don't know, 30 straight days. <laughs> yeah. I, like, certain, sometimes it just hits, you know. There was, I, believe it or not, I listened to a lot of instrumental stuff, a lot of classical music yeah. uh, when I was working on The Collector. Right. Well, man, the soundtrack to The Collector is one of the best soundtracks out there, in my opinion. I mean, you know, it, it wasn't like this hard, raging sort of music. Right. Because I felt, from a character standpoint, Arkin was a guy that sort of blew in like the wind. Mm -hmm. And was gone, and you never knew which way he came from, or yeah. which way he was going. I mean, when you really, you know, think about a thief, and if you're that level of a thief that's going in and stealing and jewels from a jeweler right you've got to be like the wind yeah definitely so i listened believe it or not to like a lot of soft tone sort of classical music yeah that's when cool. I'm feeling that. but you know the, the crazy thing is with that movie i auditioned for that movie on a wednesday uh -huh. i got the job on a thursday i was on a plane friday we're shooting monday dang the collector so i i was like the backup to the backup to the backup <laughs> yeah I was not their first choice by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> so I literally had basically two days in a hotel in Shreveport, Louisiana, to to s prepare for you know for that movie. Wow! It happened so last minute that you know it, it just was. I was blindsided by it. Yeah. And just basically had to cram it all in. Right. And that was one of the things I held on to. This guy's a thief. You know, and if he's that level of thief, he's got to be really good at what he does. Right. But number two, my wife was pregnant with our first baby at that time. Mm -hmm. And I could really easily hold on to the fact that if someone were coming after my wife and child. Yeah. As the loan sharks were that was sort of propelling me forward to go and do what I had to do. You know, it's like, look. I would do whatever I had to do to support and take care of them. Yeah. So basically those two things were all I had to go on. Right. All I could hold on to for that movie. Right. Well, I'm really glad you got that part because I feel like nobody else could have got it like you did. Like just yeah. your movements and your reactions. And this is a movie that is based on a lot of your body movement and just being quiet in your facial expressions, and I really feel like you pulled that off so great, and I really don't see anybody else doing The Collector like you did. Well, you know, the, the crazy thing is, man, is I've always, I've always wanted to do a silent film. Yeah. And I don't mean no sound, I just mean no dialogue. Right. Because to me, I think filmmaking and acting is in its most beautiful state when we don't have to speak and we can tell you the story. Right. To me, that's when, when all of those things can happen and we can adequately tell that story without having to beat you over the head with the exposition or yeah. just 
bullshit dialogue. It, yeah. It's so much better. So yeah. when I read that, it was basically, I basically didn't say a word from about page 25 to page 90 other than, how right. that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, exactly. It was virtually, I mean, if you think about it, it was really silent from, you know, right. a, a good por portion of the movie. Right. Except when the girl and her boyfriend came in and for some oh. reason didn't notice anything. <laughs> right. That's absolutely right. That's yeah. absolutely right. So, since we're on the, the idea of the collection, now, I remember Patrick and Matt both saying if it made enough money, they'd make a third one, but they don't have one as an idea right now, but they left it open. If they wanted to go back to it, they'd go back to it. Um, do you Have you heard anything about making a third well, one? The third one is written. It's been written for a little while now. Oh, okay. So, I have not read it. Okay. I, I don't like to... I didn't read the collection until it was completely greenlit. Like, that script, uh -huh. like, it was greenlit. But until they have the script that they're going to go shoot, mm -hmm. like, I don't like to get involved too much unless, you know, they really want me to because I, I don't want to get attached to something yeah, only to be cut out or, you know, whatever. So I have not read the, the script for the third, but there is a script for the third. Okay, cool. Which still, um, you know, I just finished up the big promotional push for Lionsgate who did the release of the DVD right uh, just about a month ago so I mean I know that they're still in the throes of figuring all that out okay know? awesome I was just curious because I'm ready to see that last point of that movie you're like oh come on what's going on <laughs> but at the same time it did kind of end so I mean it wouldn't disappoint me if there was a third one or it wasn't a third one. I just know I'd be excited for it. I mean, you know, for me personally, if there is a third, I want mm -hmm. it to go back to what it was to the original. Yeah. I... If I've got this man and it, it needs to, you know, he's no longer now in his place. Right. You know what I mean? It's like it, it almost needs to go back and you know, to the way it was in the first one. Yeah. Just be against him. Yeah, definitely. I you know? could totally agree with that because I think that would be marvelous. And yeah. just, it'd be cool. And that nice claustrophobic feel. I almost kind of like relate these to like the Alien movies because like the first Alien was a lot of like Singorian Weaver and the Alien, but then the second one, they added so many people and it's like, oh, what happens to all the loneliness, you know? Right, right. So... I, I would love it for it just be you and the collector and because you know where he lives at now. There's no secrets. Like, it just needs to be like an all-out battle or something. Right, right. So I it's, think... It's, it's the showdown at high noon, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and only one of us are coming out of it, so... Right. Um, so, what was it like on the set of The Dark Knight Rises? You know, man, it was... Uh... It was the best experience I've ever had. Really, uh, uh, you know, in this business. I mean, you're you're on set in the presence of genius with Christopher Nolan. Yeah, there, there's no one. I mean, he's a masterful storyteller. I mean, to me, there's Chris Nolan, there's David Fincher, there's Terrence Malick. Right. I mean, to me, those three are like on a different level. Yeah. For me, in my personal. You know, my personal opinion. Right. Uh, so, to me, it was like, I went to film school for six months. Mm -hmm. And I got to learn from... The greatest. The <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. But it's still at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, the first day... The first day I was on set, you, yeah, I was like a little boy because we were shooting in the sewer and we were shooting the scene, the fight scene between Batman and Bane when he breaks Batman's back. Yeah. So you walk on set and I'm there with Tom and then you see Batman walk in and then you see Catwoman walk in. Yeah. I mean, you're standing on set with Bane, with Batman and with Catwoman. Yeah. I mean, it's like you can't help but just feel like a little kid. Yeah. And I'm not a comic book guy by any stretch of the imagination, but it's like you can't help but be taken away by that. You right. Know I mean? 
It's just like it's, you know it's cinematic history, and you can't help but feel like a little boy. Right, definitely. You know? But it was, the, it was the best time, man. I mean, I had a great time with Tom. Tom's the nicest dude in the world. Yeah. Everybody was so freaking cool. Yeah, the experience couldn't have been better. Right. And so how was, like, Christopher Nolan as a person, like... I feel like he's. I feel like he knows exactly what he wants, and he's like, "Do this, do this, do this," and I'm, and just go from there. I feel like he'd be an awesome person to work with, in my opinion. Yeah, man. He, that guy. All of you know in this business, most of your work is done in the prep. Mm-hmm. You've got it figured out before you get there. Right. He already knows how he wants this movie cut together. Yeah. He knows what he needs. So he only goes and shoots that. You're not yeah. shooting a bunch of extraneous BS that, he, you know, there's never a moment like, well, maybe I could use that, maybe not. Well, let's just shoot this. He's not that guy. He's like, we're going to shoot this, and then we're going to shoot that, and then we have to see him when we're going to move on. Right. And because he knows it so well, you do two to three, four takes, maybe. Uh-huh. It's, you know, and he just lets you go and lets you do it. Right. Part of Chris's genius is is that he recognizes people's strengths. He knows what people are good at, and he lets them go do it. Right. I mean, that's he's a masterful storyteller, but he's a, he's also a master at, at recognizing that in other people. Right. And lets them go do it. That's so cool that he's like that. Like, I feel like that's totally way like theater productions are like too. Because, you know, because the director of the theater production is like, hey, I want you, you, and you, and you do this. And that's right. really cool that he works that way. And, and it amazes me, you say, like, two to four shots, well, two to four takes for yeah. one scene, and you look at Batman, and you're like, man, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, he, he doesn't, there was never, nothing was ever belabored. I mean, he, he wouldn't move on unless he had it. Right. But he just, you know... And when you're working with a guy like that, everybody is so on their game. Right. No one's showing up halfway. No one is taking a day off. Right. You know what I mean? So he brings it, man. Yeah. That's so fantastic to hear. Oh, yeah. So um, let's move on to The Walking Dead. Now, yeah, man. you were in the webisodes. Yeah, man. And you did stuff with Daniel Robrick and... Serena Vincent and yep. Josh. No, that's you. Uh, <laughs> now there's. Oh, what was the other guy's name that was in the first webisode with you? Ah oh, man. Well, anyways, I I just think it's interesting. Um, how was that? How close was that set next to the set that they shoot the TV show with? We shot that here in Los Angeles. We oh, shot- okay. Yeah, yeah, we shot that here in downtown LA in a storage unit. Wow. I mean, yeah. That's really we, cool. Yeah, it was all done right here. I mean, it was one of those things where they called and said, hey, look, we're going to go do this thing, and uh, Greg Nicotero is going to direct it. Right. And, uh, you know, I've always thought the world of that guy. Yeah. So, you know, do you want to come and do it? We're basically going to shoot it all in two days. Mm-hmm. And uh, are you up for doing it? And I was like, yeah, man, I'll go do it. I, you know, want to work with that dude and. Uh, was a fan of uh, The Walking Dead back when it first started, you know, those first six episodes that Darabont did. Yeah. You know, I, I don't watch TV, I don't watch much of anything, but I watched those first six episodes and I was like, man, this guy, you know, it, it's really, really freaking good. Yeah, definitely. And it's so story driven. It's not about just zombies, it's about character development, which they do so well on. Right, you know. it's a, it's you know, it's a relationship. It's a, right. you know, it's it's a story about relationships and survival. Right. What that does, I mean, it's almost you know, it's almost like the zombies are just a secondary sort of motivation to, to push it forward or or to so it's just a catalyst to deal with things, good and bad, and things that come up between you know people. Right. Who are maybe having a kid? Yeah, <laughs> love it. You know things that come up between friends, and I right. mean, 
it's it's pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, for sure. Now, there's that whole rumor that you're going to be in season four. Now, yeah. is this a rumor that you could confirm or you can't confirm or there is absolutely no way that you're going to be in season four? This is that's a rumor. That, let me put it this way: I have no idea where that came from. Okay. <laughs> I've been having people ask me that question for months now. Yeah. If I'm in season four, and I'm like, brother, I'm here in Los <laughs> I'm not in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know where that came from. I don't know how it ended up on IMDb. I don't. Yeah. I, I, you know, it, it's certainly not coming from. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not there. Right. See that it's nothing. It's like being held secret or right. Any of that stuff. Definitely. So well, that's good to know. It's something that's out there that it needs to be like. Okay, is it or is it not? And well, you know, look. When I did the webisodes, they they uh, they said they want to leave it open for the possibility. You know, mm -hmm. that's why they didn't kill us. Right. Um, so. But look, uh, you know, I can say with 100% certainty, I have not been contacted <laughs> right. about Chase living, you know, to see another day in right. the story. So. Right. Well, that's good to know. Good to know. Have you ever been able to visit the Walking Dead set? No, I never have. You haven't? All I, you know, my whole experience, like I said, was the webisodes, but yeah. I'll tell you what, man, uh, I've done a lot of creepy things in my life, and <laughs> I would stand and have conversations with these dudes dressed up as zombies. Uh -huh. But I can tell you, like, when I was down in the basement of that thing trying to get the lights to work, uh -huh. and just that dude walking up behind me, like, <laughs> I, couldn't with it. I could not deal with it. Like, I felt like snakes were crawling up my back or something. Yeah. Like, it's, I'm such a pussy when it comes to that. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, you know, that part was pretty intense. You just got that crowbar and just got him in the head and just knocked oh, yeah, him out. Man. Yeah, it was not... Yeah, I was fucking out. <laughs> I was having conversations with him in between days every time the lights went out. And he's walking up behind me. I did not like it. I did not like it. That's so funny. And then you got Daniel Robick on the other line saying, see, that wasn't so hard. And he's like, you don't even know. <laughs> yeah, that crazy dude. That's so funny. Um... So my friend Cindy, Cindy was wondering, what was your favorite movie to work on? Um, you know, I, it's got to be The Dark Knight. It's it just, uh, just working with all those people and being a part of a, a movie that, you know, that will go down in history. Right. It is cinematic history, but two, it's just sort of the cap on. It's even more special that it's the cap to Chris Nolan's trilogy of it. Right. Definitely. You know, and and getting to work with him. And everybody involved, you know, the guy, there, there's a reason, you know, filmmakers these days work with the same people over and over and over again. Right. And you can see that with the cast and crew there. I mean, everybody was just, it was the best, man. Yeah. It, it was, it, it couldn't have been a better experience. Right. How did you get involved with The Dark Knight Rises? I went and met Chris. I just went and auditioned for him. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah, just the uh, the old fashioned, the old fashioned way. Yeah. Yeah, I just went and read for him. I actually got the job, and I was only supposed to be in the beginning of the movie. I was only going to be. They hired me to play the guy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the beginning where I just drive in, mm -hmm. drop the paint off, and then I split, and then the movie gets going. That's what I was hired to do. Right. And then we get a call like two weeks after that, and they say, Chris wants to give Bane a lieutenant, and he wants to make your character the lieutenant. Yeah. Are you, uh, would you be up for coming along for the ride for six months? And I was like, well, hell yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> let's go do it. Yeah, so, definitely. I don't see anybody turning that down. I don't know why they would. <laughs> That's right. Especially to work with such an amazing cast and director for that film. It, just, right. it blows my mind. Right. Um, so, and then I also have this friend named Rob, and he watched the show Dirt, and he was wondering how it was like to work with Courtney Cox. She was great, man. She's a, you know, Courtney's a southern, uh, a southern girl, born and raised, I think, in, in Alabama. Mm -hmm. But she, uh, she's like a southern mother, just takes care of everybody. So right. the set was very easy, very mellow, very, you know, 
very cordial between the cast and the crew. Right. The, the she was super cool. Yeah. The the tone of the show was was hard to deal with at times. Just I mean, you know, if you saw the show, it was. Uh, we, I guess we were not in the best state of mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> most of the time. Right. Which can be exhausting after a while, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you're either dealing with addiction yourself or dealing with someone who has addiction problems. Yeah. You know, day in and day out, episode mm-hmm. after episode. Right. A little taxing on you. Yeah. Just a bit. What was the craziest moment on Dirt for you? Um, you know, I don't know that there's like a cra- the the craziest. I mean, mm-hmm. uh. There was more than one day that I was basically standing on set with nothing yeah. on, but like a privacy patch. <laughs> yeah. There were there were plenty of awkward moments. Yeah. I mean, those are bound. You know what I mean. So there was a there were quite a few of those days. Yeah. A few. Yeah. Awesome. Um. So, can you tell me anything about the movie Transcendence? Oh, uh, the the transcendence. Yeah. Yes, the transcendence. I, I just finished that up. Uh, uh, I guess about a week ago. Just got back from uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, shooting that. I can't get into a story or anything. Right. It's all you know. We've got confidentiality agreements, but right. uh, a really cool movie. First time director in Wally Pfister, who was Chris Nolan's DP mm-hmm. uh, for all of his movies. So it was good to go back and see Wally again and work with Wally, but and work with Wally as a director, right? But with uh, with Johnny Depp, Morgan Freeman, yeah. Paul Bettany, Rebecca Hall, Killian Murphy, Clifton Collins. I mean, Kate Mara. The, the cast was was stellar. It was unbelievable. Right. Uh, so much fun. So much fun. So cool. It's going to be a. It's going to be a great movie. Yeah, I I hate that I have to wait until next year to watch it though. Sadly, <laughs> you got a whole like, year for that thing. Right, it's the it's the going thing now. Is uh, we can't talk about anything to anyone. Yeah. So, um, and then I also have my friend Michelle that is in love with Criminal Minds, and she actually went with me to Days of Dead Chicago to meet you, and that's yeah. the reason why she was so pumped to meet you because of Criminal Minds. Oh, yeah. And um, she was curious on um, with your character Jones if you had trouble doing a New Orleans accent, or how hard, how long did you practice an accent for that? I didn't. You did. <laughs> you know what's funny is I had just finished a movie not too long before that, and my prop guy uh-huh. was from New Orleans. Right. So I was around him for you know a month or so. A little over a month, like six weeks, and just listened to him. Was you know just communicating with him, so I just spoke the way he spoke. Yeah. And I'm from West Virginia, so everything moves a little slower in West Virginia. <laughs> right. Well. So once uh, once it was time, I just had to go back into my mind and think about the way he spoke, and and I just yeah. did what I thought he what he did. Right. That's yeah. cool. Well, I just want to say that your fan base here in Indiana is hilarious. It's awesome because, like, I told everybody that I was interviewing you, and everybody was like, oh, my God, will you ask him if you'll marry me? Like, I had, like, four <laughs> people say that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'll ask him and see what he says. already got one on. And we all know that one woman is enough to keep up with. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. ladies, he's not monogamous, so don't have to worry. That's right. That's right. So, um, are you going to be doing any conventions soon? Are you going to do like film festivals for your film to get out there more? Well, that's all. We're in the middle of all of that. Like, literally, okay. I will have all of that cleared up in the next couple of weeks. Okay. And then we'll we'll have a, an announcement about all of that. But yeah, I am going to be doing some conventions. Uh, I'm going to be in Pittsburgh. Okay. In uh, September, maybe Minneapolis. I'm going to be in uh, Kansas City. Okay. And some uh, Rhode Island, I think, in uh, November, and a couple more in October that we're getting worked out. Okay, awesome. Cool. But too. there also is going to be a huge haunted house built in um, 
Vegas at Circus Circus. Every year they do a monster haunted house. Uh huh. And this year the theme of the haunted house is the collector. Oh, uh, that sounds awesome. And for the first time, and the in the past, I think they have done Saw, uh -huh. Saw themes and a couple other themes over the past few years. But this is the first year ever that they're going to send people through by themselves. Oh, that sounds intense, bad. <laughs> So I, I think uh, the beginning of October, maybe October third, is going to be when that kicks off, and I'm going to be out there for that to right to help see that go. Right, it's going to be fun, man. That sounds awesome. Are you going to go through it yourself? <laughs> no way, dude. <laughs> you went through it in the movie. You don't got to go through it again. I did two movies worth of it. I know what's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beat up from those. Right, those right. We have a taste of it. That's funny, man. That's so awesome. Oh, yeah, brother. Well, if I could have you say that you love The Walking Dead news, that'd be awesome. And I appreciate you taking the time to sit with us and just go over some awesome questions that your fans want to know. And I love how down-to-earth you are and just how nice you are. I appreciate that, brother. So, I'm excited to see The Hunted. That's I'm so pumped for that, and I really hope it gets out there and gets the Thank recognition you, man. Yeah, deserves. we'll have all that uh, dialed in. Very soon, and I'll right. uh, send that out over Twitter, and you'll see it in the press and all that stuff as well. So. All right. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, so. brother. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Have a good night, and thanks for doing this for me. Yeah, brother. Later. Bye. Later, brother. Wow.